So this video is all about one of my favorite heads, head designs, which is a strong fuzzy fiber bulkhead. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take strong fuzzy fiber, which is a wool-like synthetic. We're gonna blend it with some flash. We're gonna chop it up into some sweet proportions, work it in a loop and pack it on tight. For any time you want all the water push in the world, big bulbous silhouette, but you don't need the buoyancy, this is the way to do it. I'm Gunnar Bramer with Bramer's Custom Flies. So I currently have a weedless bucktail deceiver rigged up extended body rig on the 2 watt PR378. I'm gonna come in with my 210 Flymaster Plus to do my dubbing loop. I'm gonna pull out more than I need, make about a four and a half inch loop, bring it back down, take the thread around the loop to pinch it off closed. I'm gonna wrap back to where I want the loop to start, which is right at the base of those bucktail butts. Then I'm gonna wrap a thread base forward, wrap a thread base back to lock that all in place, make a nice little finger trap, and work up to the hook eye. <clears throat> I'm gonna come in with my Stonfo dubbing loop tool, just lock one of the hooks in and let that free hang so that I can half hitch and make sure that doesn't slip or walk or break. I just cut that on the hook eye. One of those things you gotta watch out for. Try that again. Going to come in and hit that with my wax so that as we put the strong fuzzy fiber in, we can manipulate it and move it around and get it right where we need it. So with my strong fuzz, the density is obviously relative to the size of the fly and the scale, but you can only do so much in a dubbing loop until it becomes more applicable to use a brush, right? Because the loop is only so big, you can only spin it so hard before you exceed the max elasticity of that thread and you break it. So I'm going to come in with <coughs> about... It looks like about 40 fibers. I did, a, I did a rough count, but about 40 fibers. Cut that off at the full length. Doubled my fiber count, cut it in half. Did that again, so quadrupled from the original. And this is what I always use kind of as my base reference working length. If I'm gonna stack it like on a musky fly, this is usually the length I stack it on. I'm going to eventually taper these and cut them about 70, 30, 60, 40. That's referring to the proportions of the fiber. So 70% would be out here, only 30% here on the short side like that. That's how I'm gonna integrate that into the loop. I'm gonna take some Hedron wing and flash, nice thin shredded mylar. Cut it to about the same length as the strong fuzz and start rip stacking it in. Once it's semi blended, super critical step, you have to comb this out because you need the fibers not to be twisted and, and knotted on one each other and hanging on, but they have to be all straight line perpendicular inside the stubbing loop. Now, this is a bucktail deceiver. Normally I put a little collar between the strong fuzz and the head. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna peel out some at full length and I'm gonna hand blend that with some Arctic Fox tail here that I already got the under fur out of. So I have my strong fuzz blended with some Arctic Fox so that I have kind of a collar and buffer material. I'm gonna put that in my loop first. It's going to be the longest material that's going to lay against the bucktail and build the shoulders of the fly. Now you can just let that close off and collapse so we can work with the rest here. Clean up some outliers. Now I'm gonna cut this to the proportions I want. So I'm gonna grab it about the midpoint. I'm gonna cut the short side. That's gonna be my head going to slide in that collar, which is going to be the long section, the 60% section. I'm then going to take the head section, put that in behind it. So this one loop currently has three different lengths in it. I have my long buffer material that's blending down about halfway down my bucktail. I have my short collar section. You can see I have it not put in here symmetrically, I have a long side and a short side, and then I have a head that's about symmetrical. They're spaced relatively well. You don't want it to be super dense. And most importantly, look how perpendicular all those fibers are. There's no trapped fibers anywhere, simply from being combed out after being hand blended. I'm gonna hold that level. I'm gonna pull it at myself. I'm gonna spin it under tension. Now the Arctic Fox will kind of, cause it's softer, It'll roll over on you. Pick it out prematurely. Pick it out as often as you need to to stop limper materials from getting fouled. Keep her going. Now, if you remember in the thread control video, one of the times I stretch my, my mono 
to the max and I can feel it. I can feel it stretch and I can feel it stop. And I know if I pull any further, it's gonna break. When you're twisting up an elastic thread, like the Flymaster Plus, you'll feel it start to reach its maximum point, the maximum amount of twist, because you're using up the elasticity in the twist and it'll start to get sucked closer and closer to that hook which obviously you're eating up the space as it's twisting, but you'll be able to feel it and you know if you keep twisting, it's gonna break. So I have kind of my max grip right now on that material. I'm gonna pick it out as clean as I can. I'm gonna come in with my fingers and I'm gonna work that material very, very hard to pull it back and make a very clean, you can see just how thin it is. It's about as thin as my tying thread. There's not much to it. And now I'm gonna use touching turns so every wrap is gonna butt up against itself to pack it onto this hook. <clears throat> now I'm gonna use the method of stepping it forward, right? So I'm gonna come back with my base. We're gonna go up with the hand, back with the base. I'm just trying to control basically a quarter of a turn at a time. I'm not trying to get more than that because I need to make sure you can see the hook deflect as I wrap. It has to be under pressure against that steel. Now we're right up at the hook eye here. I'm gonna finish it off. And just per the overview video, I'm pulling up with my loop. I'm gonna get my two turns, I'm gonna pull down, which I'm gonna pull all the slack out, all the slack out of the loop so it's as tight as it can get. And with that locked up bobbin, how did that happen? What'd you do? There we go. Gonna come up and trap that off. And I'm just going to leave the tool on. Just let the tool do whatever it's going to do. Focus primarily on making sure you get a half hitch in there before you come up and cut that off because I just cut <laughs> both my tying threads. Uh, what a rookie mistake. Man, just when you think it's going perfectly, you do that. And then I'm just going to come in with a comb and loosen all that up. And what's really cool is as I comb this out, you're going to be able to see the proportions of, the, of that dubbing loop and how it all layered in top of itself to create basically a fly that doesn't need any trimming, at least not extensive trimming. I'm gonna pull all that back, get that transition material over that the way I want. Come in with some light scissors, just gonna set about a 45 degree angle and lightly sculpt a blunt face to that. And that right there is a weedless swim bait rigged finger mullet that you're going to be able to fish deeper yet still have the full profile, all the volume and the water push that you would be associated with your typical bulkhead tie. So that's how I like to work strong fuzzy fiber in a dubbing loop, hitting on all those key uh, factors covered in the dubbing loop overview, the level thread, the perpendicular material. We talked about loop proportions. I kind of have that wing, which was full length or quarter length, technically, uh, strong fuzz blended with Arctic Fox. Then I had my collar, then I had my head and how the proportions in the loop, they're staggered, asymmetrical, asymmetrical, symmetrical, building this teardrop cone as you palmer it forward for minimal trimming, just really to clean it up. And then you walk that under pressure, staging it quarter turning with your vise to make sure that it is locked onto that hook as tight as possible with the double leverage system to tie it off and then try not to cut your thread. <laughs> but thanks for watching guys. Uh, I'll catch you in the next one.